Hi everyone! We miss you lots. Can't wait to see you. Yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Say bye lots of love. <laughs> Hello everyone. Miss you all. Hopefully we'll see each other very soon. God bless. Take care. Hello. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Wave. Everybody wave. Say bye. 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 Say bye, Papa. <laughs> Say hello everybody. Hello. hello. Good morning everyone. We miss you all. And love you all. Hope and pray you are all doing well. Lots of love. Here's a look. Mommy. Good morning and welcome to Donna Cloney Parish. Uh, if you're not from our parish, we would love you to email in or to send a wee message in the comments where you're watching this from. Uh, if you're watching it uh, from further afield than Waringstown and Donna Cloney, you're very, very welcome. If we can serve you in any way, we'd love to. George and I uh, love to help people understand who Christ is and why he came. And so later on uh, next month, it's early month on the 2nd of July, we'll be opening uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians and Discipleship Explored. Uh, and I'll be running that. And if you want to email me, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at donnacloneyparish.co.uk, we can get details for that sent out to you. And George will be looking at Mark's Gospel, Christianity Explored, on the 6th of July as we study um, who Jesus is, why is he coming, why does that matter to us? We'll also be running our quiz. Uh, we ran one in May, the Fee family won that. Uh, but in June, we'll be running another one. And we'd love you to be part of that. It's going to be on the 25th of June. Also, Crosslinks are running uh, a few nights, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Please go to Crosslinks' Facebook page, where Nick Jones, who's a, a great Bible teacher, will be teaching us from Romans 12, Love Thy Neighbor, uh, and I really encourage you to get along to those events. Also, uh, we as a family want to say thank you to you. Uh, we want to thank you for your love and care for us in a, in a, in a time of shock and loss. Uh, so it's, thank you. I don't think there's been so many flowers or cards around our house uh, for many, many years. Uh, and so thank you. You have been very loving and caring to us. We have been buoyed up this past week by the prayers and support of God's people. So thank you. Thank you, church family. The face that you're going to see is uh, not mine this morning. I'm not going to be leading the service. I'm going to be handing over the reins probably in a few years. He'll probably take over from me. Uh, to my son Elijah, who's going to lead our family service this morning. This morning, we are going to look at Peter's word. And Peter says in Acts 2, verse 36, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you, cru whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah, both Lord and King. And now we are going to pray. Dear God, thank you that you have your King, Jesus Christ. And this morning you want us to give you give praise to your King and be part of his kingdom. Please this morning help us to grow more like Jesus in how we think, in how we speak, and in what we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we are going to sing King of Me. My God's the king of the giants, my God's the king of the lions, my God's the king of the creatures of the deep, my God's the king of me. Have you heard the story about my friend King Day? Wouldn't let the giant stand in his way. He said, hand me my sling, cause he's not that tall. My God is bigger and I watch him fall. My God's the king of the giants, my God's the king of the lions. 
When I'm lost and afraid, all alone in the dark, you're with me. Oh, you're with me, yeah. My God's the king of the giants. My God's the king of the lions. My God's the king of the witches of the deep. My God's the king of me. My God's the king of the giants. My God's the king of the lions. My God's the king of the witches of the deep. My God's the king of me. My God's the king of me. Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. And now we are going to pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has promised full forgiveness to all who come to him with true repentance and faith in his Son. God forgives us because Jesus is the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Amen. And now we are going to watch a video called God's Story, Peter Preaches. God's Story, Peter Preaches. So remember how part of God's story is about a guy named Peter who followed Jesus even though he messed up sometimes? Well, it goes like this. After Jesus died to rescue us, he came back to life. Forty days later, he rose into the sky right up to heaven. Right before he left, he told his disciples, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. After that, Peter and the others weren't sure what to do, so they waited together in Jerusalem. While they waited, a sound like wind came from heaven. They saw flames that looked like tongues land on their heads. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Other people who followed Jesus were waiting in Jerusalem too. And when they heard the sound, they all crowded together, even though they spoke lots of different languages and couldn't talk to each other. But the Holy Spirit gave Peter and the disciples power. Now they could show people how to follow Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit helps us do things we can't do by ourselves. That day, the disciples spoke, and everybody understood them. That's like if someone said something in Latin or Swahili and we understood it. Seems impossible, but that's what happened. So Peter stood up and told everybody how the Holy Spirit had come and that we can all follow Jesus. He said, turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. By the way, that means that when we believe in Jesus, we get the gift of the Holy Spirit too. Anyway. Peter told huge crowds of people about Jesus that day, and more than 3,000 people chose to follow him. Jesus had given Peter a job, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter would do that job for the rest of his life. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus died. He came back to life. He rose up to heaven. His followers had a job. They waited for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came. Peter spoke. Everyone understood. People believed in Jesus. They got the Holy Spirit too. And that's a part of God's story.
And now we're going to be led in our prayers by the Walker family. Dear Lord, thank you for all the ice creams and all the smoothies and all the lovely <laughs> And thank you for all the brothers and sisters and thank you for the bunny rabbit. Dear Lord, we are sorry for all the times over the past months when we have been ungrateful, when we have moaned about our situation and our frustrations have been reflected in our behaviour and attitude towards those we love. We are sorry for being self-obsessed and forgetting that you are in ultimate control even in these unprecedented times. We are sorry for forgetting to count our many blessings, including an accessible healthcare system, a government to guide us in these times, and even for the homes we live in, the food on our tables and the beautiful weather we have had. We take so much for granted, Lord, including our resources such as internet access, which enables us to keep in contact with our families, friends and churches, but which for many people across the world is an unimaginable luxury. Father, help us to think of others in various parts of the world who do not even have basic provisions. May we count our blessings rather than our disappointments. May our attitudes and behaviour reflect our privilege, and for when we fall short of your standards, Lord, we are truly sorry. Please help all those who are working to care for communities during this pandemic situation. Be with the key workers who we all rely on and yet so often forget or take for granted. Guide all who are in a position of responsibility locally and nationally, and help them to find a path through the, these difficult times. Be with our church leaders, especially Brian and George Logley, and with the McLean family in Thailand, and help them to continue to adapt to best serve you in a rapidly changing world. We pray that you would be with all those who are isolated or afraid, and with all those who are unwell, especially Sheila and Bert. Please comfort those who are grieving or sad, in particular the Woods and the Martin family circles. Amen. Thank you, Walkers, for the prayers there. We're going to have our... Bible memory verse now, it's from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let's try that one more time together. It's from Acts 1, verse 8, and it says, But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, we're going to make it a little bit difficult now, and we're going to start taking away a few words. So let's see if you can remember that memory verse. And it's from Acts 1, verse 8. And it says, But you will receive when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my, in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well done if you remembered that all. Well, let's make it even a, a little bit harder and we're going to say it's from Acts 1, verse, but you'll receive when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my, in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the, well done. That's very good. Well, let's put all the words back again, and let's say them all together. Acts 1, verse 8, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. God has called every Christian, young and old, to be his witnesses everywhere. And now we're going to pray before the Bible reading. Lord, please open my eyes to the truth of your word. Amen. And now Cora Clark is going to do the Bible reading. This reading can be found in Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 36. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, 
freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to sing Jesus is the King and after George is going to do the sermon. Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised from the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. He is the King. He commanded the fishermen, Hey, come follow me.
Hello boys and girls, it's good to be here and to share the word of God with you again. I don't need to introduce myself to you boys and girls, I remain George. Well, there is something which I would like to tell you today. You know there are so many jobs that people do, um, ranging from maybe being a doctor, those that work in the hospital, you know those that build houses, you remember the plumber uh, that works, you know, trying to fix things in the kitchen and things like that, especially when water is not flowing very well. Well, to do a special job, you definitely need a special skill and you need special things to get your job done. So today, boys and girls, I'm going to invite you to come with me and we're going to see and meet some of our friends who have been doing great job using their skills and using a very special gift which God has given them. Okay, let's go. Come with me. Hey, Carter. Hi. I see you're so busy walking away there. But can I ask you, who does the job you're doing? Who uses that? Farmer. What? A farmer. A farmer. Thank you. And are you planning to, I mean, to, I mean, are you planning to plant something? You're not sure? No. no? Anyway, I won't stop you from your work. Keep walking. Walk away. Good man. Well done. What is he doing? Hey. <laughs> Hey, look, how are you? Good. Good, and uh, I see you are well dressed, looking after your cat. Yeah. And who dresses like that? A doctor. A doctor. So you're trying to look after the cat. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good profession you've chosen. Well done. A veterinary doctor, we always looked after all the animals. I won't stop you from doing your work. Don't let your cat go away. Keep looking after your cat. Check the pulse. All right, boys. Um, the disciples of Jesus, uh, we can also call them the friends of Jesus. They need something so they could do a special job for Jesus. So can, can I ask you, um, from the story probably you've had us discuss in the church, what do they need to do the special job for Jesus? They need what? Holy they need the Holy Spirit to do the special job for Jesus. Absolutely. I'll tell you more about the story of what happened in Acts chapter 2 from verse 22 to verse 36. So boys and girls at home, I want you to listen up and let's share the word of God together. Wow. It's great to meet Luke and to meet uh, um, our other friend, Carter, who was walking away doing great things. And also, it's great to ask them that Bible question. What would the disciples need? I mean, the friends of Jesus, for them to be able to do the great job. And they said the Holy Spirit. So today, in uh, our true story from the Bible, the disciples needed something to help them do a special job for Jesus. But before we go straight into the Word of God, do you want to bow down your heads and let me open for us in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you love us so much. We thank you for the promised gift which you have given unto us. And we thank you because we can share about you with all our friends and also befriend with you. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. Now, let's go straight into the Bible. Our Bible reading today is from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 from verse 22. What actually happened there was uh, that a man called Peter, he stood up and he addresses the crowd. He was telling them something that they probably know or they are not sure about. All right. So what was Peter saying and why did Peter have to address the crowd? Peter was talking about a man called Jesus and he's trying to tell them that Jesus is the king. But what does this mean? And why did Peter say this? How could he do that? Well, there is something which I would like to tell you. Earlier in the Bible passage, there something happened in chapter 1. The disciples were gathered in a place. Do you remember? Do you remember Jesus died? And then he rose again, and then he showed himself to so many people, and then he went up to the heaven. 
he went back to God in the heaven and he promised he's going to give his friend a special gift. Now, it was that gift that they received and that gift helped Peter to speak. Now, boys and girls, there is something which I would like to show you. Um, actually, this is not my toy, okay? This belongs to Heritage, my little boy. And it's a, it's a sport car, actually. It's a Ferrari. Well, I wish I can own one. But look at this car very well. You need something to make it work. You need to power this. And to power this, to make it work, you need this, which is called the remote control. So with this remote control, you can control this car and makes it work. But can I ask you a question? I'm trying to control this car using my remote and it's not working. What do you think I need in this remote to make it work? Do you whisper it? Say it loud. The battery, exactly. I need to put the battery because in my remote, there is no battery. But if I put the battery in the remote, uh, put two AA battery, I will be able to power this car and it will function very well. It will work fast and then I can drive everywhere. Exactly. That is what the disciples, the disciples are Jesus' friend. That is what they need in them. But I must say this, they don't need the battery in them. But what they needed in them to make them do the work of God is the Holy Spirit. That is the gift that Jesus promised he was going to give them. They needed the Holy Spirit. And just from the video uh, that Luke and Otto, uh, Carter rather, uh, did for us, I was asking them what Jesus' friend needed to, make, uh, to be able to tell other people about Jesus. And they said, the Holy Spirit, they got it right. That is exactly the power that came upon them. So in verse 22, do you know what Peter did? Peter was bold to speak. And he said, men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. Peter started to speak about Jesus. And the first thing he said about him is that Jesus did a lot of miracles. And what does miracle mean? Miracle means special act, you know, that no man can do by his own strength except by God himself. Do you remember any of the miracles in the Bible from our Sunday school? I'll tell you one. Do you remember water turned into wine? Yes, some of you will remember that. I've, did, I've, I've done that before in one of the talk, water turned into wine. Jesus did that in a wedding in Cana, a place called Galilee. And apart from that, do you remember Lazarus? What happened to Lazarus? He died. Lazarus is Jesus' friend, but Jesus went to him and he said, our friend is asleep, and he woke him up. He raised him back to life. And Lazarus was reunited with his family and they were so happy that Jesus did this. All these signs and miracles points to Jesus as the king, as the Messiah. And apart from that, Jesus also died. And that is what Peter told the crowd in verse 23. Do you see it? Let me read it quickly to you. Peter said, this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. Do you remember that? Jesus had an unfair trial, and he was nailed to the cross. When he was nailed to the cross, Jesus died. And what happened to him on the third day? 
he rose again. Jesus rose again on the third day. And Peter acknowledged this. He said in verse 24, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Jesus rose again. So Jesus is alive. And after that, you know, Peter tried to convince the people. He explained to them that Jesus is actually more powerful, is greater, he is God's king, and is even more greater than King David. Do you know a king? Have you ever seen a photograph or a picture of a king? Now, tell me some of the things that will make you recognize a king. The crown. The crown is something that is very, very good. When you put the crown on, you will know that that person is a king. The king always have a royal robe, and then they have a crown. Everybody at home, do you want to put up your hand like this? And let us wear the crown. Let's put it on after the count of three. One, two, three. Yes, that is it. That is what makes you recognize a king. So Jesus is more than King David, is better than King David. Why? Because King David died and he did not rose again. He didn't rise again. But Jesus died and he rose again. That is what Peter said. Peter said, David died and he remained there in the grave but in verse 32, Peter said, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses, I mean, witness of the fact. So Jesus was exalted to heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God, and he has received the promised gift. Do you remember when I was talking to you about the car, the remote control? Now it is just an illustration that points us to the gift that Jesus promised his disciples, his friends. The gift is the Holy Spirit. Do you want to say that after me? Holy Spirit. After the count of three, one, two, three. Holy Spirit. So the promised gift is the Holy Spirit. So Jesus went to heaven. He received that gift from his father and he gave it to his friend and that gift enabled them to be able to tell all other people about Jesus they were telling people that Jesus is the king. Jesus is the king. And many people that had this made a response. The response they made, you find it in verse 38. Actually, we didn't read that, but I'm happy to point you to that. Because some people asked Jesus, I mean, Peter, what shall we do now that you've told us everything about Jesus? You've told us that he is the one who has come to save us as the Messiah, you've told us that he died, you've told us that he rose again from the dead. Now, what should we do? And Peter told them, Peter said, repent and be baptized, baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do you know what repentance mean? Repentance mean turning back from our own way and turn to Jesus. Repentance means stop going the wrong way, stop doing the bad thing, turn away from doing things that are not good, and turn to Jesus. Start to follow him, love him, be his friend. And the power of the Holy Spirit will also help us to tell our friends about Jesus. So do you want to tell other people about Jesus? Do you want to invite them to come and love him as we have loved him? That would be great. That would be something fantastic if you can do that this week and throughout the month. Well, till I see you again, that is the end of our true story in the Bible. And that is the response that is expected of us as young children. But before I finish, let me pray with you. Lord, we thank you for the promised gift of the Holy Spirit that enables us to proclaim the gospel with boldness and tell people about Jesus, the King. 
Help us, O oh Lord, to put our trust in him, to turn away from our sin, and to follow Jesus for the rest of our life. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, George, for doing the sermon. And now we are going to sing, Behold Our God.
Behold our King Nothing can compare Come let us adore Him Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, George, for your really helpful word. This morning, thank you, boys and girls, for helping the Walker family. Uh, can I thank Luke and Carter as well, and Cora? And can I thank, on your behalf, Elijah, who led our service so well this morning. But let's remember our memory verse, uh, Acts 1, verse 8. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so let's close our service this morning by saying together the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you.